morning, Mother Barnes. Good morning. Good morning. Walking 
close to me. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is old, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely old, to the kingdom show, to the show. Just the close to walk with me. Granny Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. Okay, let us pray. Father God, first of all, we just want to thank you, Lord, for you giving us the opportunity again to come into your presence, God, at this hour, Lord, to study this Sunday school lesson, God. We want to thank you, God, for last night's sleep as the late slumbering slept in the state of death and how you placed an angel, Lord, by our bedside. What was it in, on time this morning, Lord, and not into eternity? We just want to give you glory, Lord, and give you praise, God, for that. We want to thank you, God, for all the things, God, that you do every day, Lord, in each and every one of our lives. And then God teaches how to pray, things to pray for. And then God will mention you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, touched the Sunday school teacher this morning, Lord, and known her fresh from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Lord, down in your storehouse, the wisdom and knowledge, Father. And as she come forth, Father, to teach this Sunday school lesson, give her the glory, Father, and, and the praise. And then, Lord, open the Bible spirit your ears. So, Lord, that we can take this Sunday school lesson, Lord, into our heart, Father God. And uh, I'm asking you, Lord, this morning, Lord, inviting your Holy Spirit, your anointing, God, into this house and have your way, God, in this house this morning, God, and, and your glory. And then, Father, this prayer I lay before thee this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Mother Barnes, for the song, Reverend Faith, and for the prayer. Again, thank each of you for joining in with us this morning. Um, we're going we're gonna to ask uh, Sister Minnie, are you able to take uh, minutes this morning? Yes, I'll try. Thank you, ma'am. Um, we're going to turn it over to... Trustee Wooten for the Sunday School lesson. Uh, Sister Wooten, thank you this morning for uh, letting the Lord use you as he will. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Our lesson for the day is from the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 9 through 17. And the subject is the challenges of change. Now, I will, I will listen to start at verse 9, but you really have to go back and read the other to know, to, to know what's going on with it. And if we're talking about Saul, Saul was threatening with every breath. He was eager to destroy every Christian. He went to the high priest in Jerusalem and got letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus and requiring their, requiring their cooperation and persecution of any believers he found there. And both men and women, he said, so he could bring them to Jerusalem and change. And then in verse 3, he had said, as he was near Damascus, a bright light from heaven shined down upon him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul said, who's speaking, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. And now, now get up, he told Saul, so now, now get up, go into the city, and you'll be told what to do next. And the, the men were with him. They were speechless. They heard this voice, but they didn't see anyone. They were shocked. And then 
Verse 8 says, Saul picked up and picked himself up off the ground. He thought he was blind and had to be led into the master. And this is where we pick up with verse 9 of our lesson. It says, And he was there three days, blind and without food or water. And there was a disciple in the master named Ananias. And <clears throat> And he said, uh, the, name, the Lord spoke to him in a vision. He said, Ananias, and Ananias said, yes, Lord. He said, um, I get up, said, go over to Straight Street and find the house of a man named Judas and look for a man of Tarsus called Saul. So he's praying. And, 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 and I, and, and some thought, he said, and I have shown him in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. Ananias said, Lord, said, I've heard all about how evil this man is and all the terrible things he had done to the saints in Jerusalem. Said, and now you tell me, <laughs> Now he shows up here to do the same thing to us. And you telling me to go over there and lay hands on him? But the Lord said to Adonai, he said, go and do what I say. For Saul is my chosen vessel. He going to take my message to the nations before the Gentiles, the king, and Israel. So don't worry about it. I, I, I got that all taken care of. He said, I will show him how much he must suffer for me. So Ananias went over, and he found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me to you, sent me so you may be filled with the Holy Spirit and get your sight back. Now, when we look at some of the things, in, in this here. First thing, you know, the Romans, they felt like they were losing control over the people in Damascus because they were getting converted to Christianity. And, you know, Saul being the, the arrogant person he was, arrogant, determined, and self-righteous, he was, the, he was the right bully for them to use to do their dirty work. And Saul didn't mind doing it. He would get permission from the high priest, he'd get letters, and he'd come in there and go into every household and drag them out if they believed, if they didn't believe what he wanted them to believe. If they had been converted to Christianity, he would go in there and drag them out, take them to Jerusalem and in chains and have them, have them killed. They'd be persecuted, they would trump up some charges that, uh, um, at the court, and, and the next thing you know, these people were killed. And he said, men or women, it didn't make him no difference. But you see, and uh, he had he had taken this, Paul had taken, he was Saul then, he had taken this journey many times. But what he didn't know, this time was going to be different. God had a plan. And when God got a plan, <clears throat> When God got a plan, nobody else plan works. Nobody else needs words about anything. But uh, God told him, said, uh, <clears throat> and through him, he said, uh, through Christ, Saul got humble. Saul became humble, and he was blind. And he, had, you know, he never saw that coming because he's always had his way. He gone there and done what he wanted to. And then only to look out and see, now he needed help. He needed somebody to lead him around in the city. When God gets tired of our mess, he knows how to stop us. All through scripture, when God wants to get our attention, he would do so whether in a crowd or alone. But he got tired of Saul and he said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul just thought, you know, what he was doing was right. And the, the priests and the high priests and the chiefs and all those stuff, they went along with it. 
and saw the raging prostitute. He'd been reduced to shambles. Be before his vision, he was a monster that everyone was afraid of. And now he was broken and he was helpless and had to be led by others. God knows how to bring you down. When when God told Ananias to, to, to go help Saul, Ananias said, now, Lord, you can't be serious. You know his reputation. Why are you doing that? We hear he has a rest warrant with him from the chief priest authorizing him to arrest every believer in Damascus. And, you know, you telling me to go lay hands on him? Said, no, no, Lord. Well, I told him, and I said, don't argue with me. And don't worry. He said, I got this. Everything is taken care of on both ends. He's seen, you've seen a vision, he's seen a vision. I've given both of you a vision. He said, now, I, I want you to do that. Everything will be all right. Ananias, was not, he was not only fearful for himself, he was fearful for his family. All the saints he knew, that, but he also knew, as, as much as I'm afraid, I must obey God. And, you know, that's, that, that's very hard. That's got to be very hard. The person, the main person who is trying to kill you, who is bringing you down, and this is the one the Lord is telling you to go and lay hands on and help him, that's got to be hard. God told Adam and I said, I picked him as my personal representative to non Jews and king and, and Jews, and now I'm about to show him what he, what's he in for. I'm going to go show him the hard suffering that he's going to have to deal with because in, in my name. And you know, at some time or another, we all have been fearful. I don't care how afraid you are. There are some times when you will be fearful. It may be just a temporary thing, and it could be a little longer, but I'm saying that we still, we're in the flesh, and we're in a fallen world. So we, we will have time when we'll be just like Adam and I. We'll be a little fearful. And we have to choose to obey God. Now, Ananias could have disobeyed God, or Ananias could have went in there and said, this is my opportunity. I will kill him, and we won't have to worry about him no more. We won't have to worry about the fight. Uh, but Ananias didn't do any of that. It's kind of like when, when David was, when the other Saul, when David was there, he, when he went in there, he cut a piece of cloth off of him off of the robe that Saul was wearing when he was in the cave. He had an opportunity to kill him, but he said, I will not touch God's anointing. But Dan and I could have gone in there, and uh, Saul couldn't see me anyway. And he, he didn't have to pray for him. He didn't have to lay hands on him. But he did have to obey God, and he knew that. And that's what we have to do. We have to obey God. And then, you know, uh, uh, we, we can be we can be we can be so fearful of things, but um, but we don't have to. Fear going to come, but we have to let our faith in God be stronger than our fear, and that takes time. That takes a building up. And Anna and I welcome Saul as a brother in the faith. I know that must have been hard, and carried out his responsibility as Jesus' agent. Saul conversion was complete. Now, you know, after regaining your sight and being baptized by Ananias, and Saul spent a few days in the master with his disciples, and, and, and he was such a changed person, he began to witness and to preach that Jesus is the Son of God. And, you know, this that he was a major thorn in the thorn in the Christian community. Like a thorn in the side, he was a thorn in the Christian community. Now he was speaking the resurrection, uh, the resurrection of Jesus with bold confidence. He was converted to the religion that he wants in prison other people for practice. So when God get when God picks you up, when God changes, I mean, <laughs> things are so different. This was something that Saul always thought he would be doing the rest of his life. He was brave. He didn't mind going in there, going to the people's home, 
have his men pull him out and, and, and bring him on down there to Jerusalem to be prosecuted, persecuted. He didn't care. He didn't care. But now, he's just as strong one way as he was the other way. And he began to realize just how wrong he had been to God and his people. And, and see, Jesus' identification with the church and with his disciples meant Saul had been on the wrong side. He was promoting the wrong Paul, and he was persecuting the wrong people. God called the church's number one enemy and made him a witness to and for his truth. Ananias was fearful of Saul, but he trusted God more. And, and, and that is great. And that's what we have to do. The troubles will come. The trials will come. But we don't have to trust God. And when we face difficulties, you know, it's easy to focus on the size of the challenge. Like Ananias was saying, oh, no, mm -mm, not him. Anybody else that don't mind going, Lord, but don't send me down to Saul because I'm afraid of that man. But when we face the uh, difficulty, it's easy to, to focus on the size of the challenge. But if that is all we see, we're sure to give in to fear or despair. So God invites us to look back on the victory he's already won for us. So look back <clears throat> and see some of the things I've already brought you through. Don't you think I can bring you through this? And when we, when we do, when we do that, we can move forward with confidence in his strength. We're knowing that God is mightier than whatever challenge we face. And you see, uh, um, the, the scripture tells us that we must do good to our enemies. We must pray for them. And all that, that that's, that's kind of hard. And I can imagine how poor Ananias must have felt. And, he, and, and like the Lord called Ananias, he may call us to help our enemies. And, you know, we're going to have to do like Ananias. We're going to have to obey God. And uh, how will we respond when he, if he calls us to help an enemy like Saul or any enemy we have that we know have done us so wrong? How will we respond? But, you know, without the help of the Holy Spirit, it will be tough and it may not get done because our natural tendency is to hate and avoid our enemies. But, but in Proverbs 25, 21 through 22, it says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heat coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. In other words, when you be kind to someone who's been so mean to you and everything, when you, when you show kindness to your Enemy, they make them ashamed. They're surprised that you're treating them so good, and they're ashamed at the way that they have treated you. But God will reward you for your, for doing what the Bible told you to do. And so we don't know what God's going to call us to do, but we have to be ready. Now, we the only way we can be ready is this. We have to stay in the Word. And we have to stay ready to keep that connection going with God because that connection keeps our fellowship with the Lord going. And that's what we need. Every day we need to, you know, focus on God. And the song that the song that the blind boys of Alabama, I believe, sing that when you see me coming, I got Jesus on my mind and Jesus all the time. And that's the way we need to be. The only way you're going to get through this life successful, the only way you're going to be able to deal with some things that's going on in your life is that you're going to have to have Jesus all the time. Jesus is going to have to stay on your mind. And, and you know, we and even when the rough times come, it, it ain't no problem when the good times, when things are pro real prospering, things are doing good. Oh, yeah, you say God is good all the time, all the time God is good. But there's going to be some dark days. Every day is just not going to be a day of complete sunshine and with no problems and all. No, there's going to be some dark days. So what we have to do is in the good times, 
prepare for the dark time. Because, and you you do that by, you stay on the Word, you meditate on the Word, you pray, and you ask God for guidance. You spend quality time with God. I don't mean you come in and say, well, okay, I read a whole chapter today, so I mark that off. That's not the way we're talking about. We're talking about spending quality time with God. Just sometimes you just get there and you just sit in his presence and wait for him to direct you. You don't have to necessarily open the book to read. Well, just sit down sometimes and just let God talk to you because we all need that. Let him guide you. And, 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 and Proverbs tell us in all our ways, acknowledge God. And, you know, and, and he'll direct our path. But he can't direct it if we don't have our attention. And so, you know, just like he used Ananias. Well, he could have, God could have just spoke the word and Saul, you know, could have seen. But no, he had another purpose in mind. He wanted Ananias to go down there and do it. He could have done it. We know that. But God, just like some things, it looks like maybe he could do for us. But God is wanting us to do something. And this is why we have to stay in fellowship. We have to keep that, that, that line open because we don't ever know when we're going to need it. And we have to think about, and it's a hard thing, but we have to start learning if we already haven't gotten to that point where we can talk and, and have fellowship even with our enemies. And that's, and that's like this could be a hard thing to do, but nevertheless, that's just what, that's what they are saying. That's what the scripture is telling us. And God says that uh, when you were my sinner, I saved you. And just like that, just like these people, I forgave you and you need to forgive them. And like I always say, it is hard. It can be hard. It depends on what they did sometimes and who it was, or that type of thing. But nevertheless, it's just like Joseph. His brothers did, did it wrong. And his plan was, their plan was just get rid of him, kill him. And all that stuff, it, it didn't bother them a bit. But then when Joseph had gone through all these trials, and everything, and it, it turns out they came. They needed food, and they didn't even know who Joseph was. He knew who they were. Instead of treating them like some people would have treated them, what did he do? He looked out for them, just like he looked out for everybody. And he was glad to be united with his brother. What did they do? They were so ashamed. They was afraid that Joseph was going to take revenge on them. No, Joseph wasn't going to do that. He had gone through too much, and he had been, you know, he, he, had, he had taken care of so many things. He'd been through so many things, also in prison and all, all that stuff. People told him in prison when they got out, we, we're going we're gonna to talk to the man about you. They went on and forgot all about it. But Joseph didn't lose hope. He did not lose his faith in God. And this is the way it's got to be for us. Because sometimes it seems like you write out of one thing, and it's another. And every time you turn, there's something else going on. But we have to keep on keeping on. At this stage of our life, there's no other choice but to keep on. If you're on board, you got to stay on board. And if you're not on board, you're going to have to get on board. And this is just the way it is at this point. But we are, we are alive. We have another chance. Each day, God gives us another chance to get it right or to, to increase our faith. But this is the way it's going to be on out. And, it, and things are not going to change so much. We are going to have to stay the course. We, we're going to have to do like, we're just going to have to, to get a hold of it. And, and so many little things that's so easy to be said. We're going to have to get rid of those things, you know. And just like if you had out against someone or if there's things you haven't always gotten along with someone, put it put it down. Put it aside. It's, it's time to move on now. It's, it's time to move on. And you can't move on dragging that load. 
you got to let the load go and get your connection right with God. And, and no matter what the enemy has done, who are your enemy or whatever, don't don't worry about it. God got it. When he told Ananias to go and, and lay hands on Paul, he already he already had had talked to Saul. He had taken care. They both had a vision from God. And so God has got our enemies already taken care. But we have to let our enemy know, you meant it for bad, but God meant it for my good. All it did was help me grow and be strong. And as believers, we have to stay prepared by reading the word, meditate, prayer, spending quality time with God. So when he wants to use us, we, we're ready. We're ready. So are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you this morning. I thank God for letting you teach that awesome lesson. And you say, hey, you used to say, Alan and I, he didn't want to go. But God is not going to send you nowhere, and he's not going to be with you. He's going to be with you all the time. Because he said, I'll never leave you or even forsake you. And right. then... Also, like you said, when you got an enemy, you got to learn to forgive and forget and go ahead and do what you got to do for that enemy because you keep holding on to that load, it'll drag you down too. That's exactly right. And then another thing, God's going to take care of the enemy. That's right. Leave that. That's his business. Leave that to him. And you keep on going as, as best you know how. That's right. You can't you can't go forward where every time you talk about something stirred up, this thing or that thing. Some of that stuff, old stuff, it, it's just off the let it go. That's right. So when God fixes it, gonna be well fixed, and ain't nobody can say nothing or do nothing about it. That's right. That's exactly right. Are there any other comments? Yes, this Nancy. I learned from um that because I'm I'm one of the ones that keep baggage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm one of the ones that keep baggage. So I I thank you for that because I need to let my baggage go because God got me. He he got it. He got it. He always got a ram in the bush for me. I like to say that. So I learned I need to let that baggage go. Well, if you notice, the more you hold on to the baggage, the heavier it gets. It doesn't do anything but just block your success. That's right. That's right. You, you can't work for God with all that load. No, no, you can't. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> he wants us to, to, to lay off all that weight, everything that would hinder us from following him. Yes. He's telling us to let it go. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, someone else has had a comment? And like you said, we need to let it go and turn it over to God because he going to handle it on his time and not on our time. Right. And see, there's another another thing. Sometimes... While God is taking care of the situation, sometimes he has to do some work in us, too. That's right. Uh You see, when he got Ananias, he did some work in Ananias. Then he did some work in Paul. So when they met, you know, that was nothing to be fearful of or to worry about. So sometimes he has to do work in us also. That's right. You know, this man's like, um, this Janice said, sometimes you got to let go of stuff because things hold you back. And when you let go, you'd be amazed at how much better your life becomes once you let go of that bad stuff that you're holding on to, like somebody did something to you and you don't want to let it go. Once you let it go, you can feel a relief and things uh-huh. get better. And then you can, that way you can turn around and you can, you can focus on God more. Because, you know, God is in charge of the whole thing. 
he's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of the enemy. But if you don't ever let it go, he's going to have to do some work in you, too. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. That's why I said go and let it go. That's right. And trustee Woo. Yes, uh, one thing about Paul, he preached just as hard as he could. Yes. To bring uh, people into God's kings and how to say as he, as he did, he as he was dragging people you know, in to be That's the right. He you know for preaching the gospel. Yeah, he was just a tough one way, he was the other way. Mm-hmm. And I truly enjoyed the Sunday school lesson this morning. You've done a good job. Thank you, ma'am. I'm so glad that we all are getting some out of it. Yes, ma'am. You've done a great job. We're on this journey. We're on this journey together, and we all are here to learn. That's right. And we even learn from one another by, by the comments someone makes sometimes. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So. That, that's the good thing about having our Sunday school lesson. Everybody get, have to have a comment. They are able to make it, and like you said, we learn sometimes from someone else's comment. And uh, this is the way it should be. This, this is how we learn. Because most of the, just about every lesson we had, I think many of us have seen ourselves in that situation. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Today, what we look at, if they don't have, you know, whatever is going on, you talk to God about it first. And then, you know, and ask God to help you to, to let it go. Because you can't do it by yourself. If you could, I think you might would have already done it. And then, too, some people just like the idea of holding on to it because they have something to all about all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but when you just, you come clean with God, you tell God you want to, you ready to let that, you ready to light that heavy load, and you ready to let it go, and you ready to follow Him, and you know it's going to be tough, but you're going to keep right on. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, are there any other comments? Yes. yes, I would like to come in. I, mean, I enjoyed the Sunday school, what part I heard. But, um, so, you know, we have a, anything against anybody. And uh, before we get into heaven, we have to ask the good Lord to forgive us. In other words, God will send the Spirit. Yes. This is uh, the same, whoever is saved. He'll give you that spirit and that Holy Ghost power, and you will forgive them. You are ready to forgive them. And you, anything they want, uh, want you to do for them, you'll do it. Because, see, that's the Holy Ghost power. You can't right. do it on your own. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You, I can't do it on my own. But God can. He can help us to do it. Forgive them. We have to forgive them in order uh-huh. to get into heaven. I don't care what they have to do to us. Uh-huh. Listen. So I just thank God that I'm able to forgive anybody. I don't hold nothing against them. And if I can help them, I help them in this place. Because I don't want to miss going to heaven. No, no. There's nothing here worth it. It's not worth it. Money can't buy nothing, nothing. Are there, are there any other comments? Enjoy the lesson. Thank you. I enjoy preparing it. Thank you. If there aren't, if there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Thank you, Trustee Wooten, for such a wonderful lesson and uh, listening and enjoying the comments. And let us all be reminded, as, as has been stated, 
that we have to remember that we have to forgive and God will take care of those issues that, uh, that have, have been plaguing us um, at, his own, at his own time, at his own will. But we have to love one another and let us forgive. Um, I, when we think about Paul and Saul and all that he did and how he persecuted the church for God, changed his life miraculously, and he changed, went from persecuting the church to being a, uh, really the strongest advocate for the church. And there was those who remember what Paul used to do. But uh-huh. we have to be reminded that when Christ comes into our lives, when we are touched by the hand of God, mm-hmm. and we are able to move from who we used to be mm-hmm. to who God, who God wants us to be, mm-hmm. we are able to do great work for the kingdom of God. So we are just thankful this morning for you, Trustee Ruben, and for each of you that have shared in, in comments. Um, and just say, Quick note, uh, uh, Sister Johnson, we have 11 online, and we have 15 inside the building. That's 11 and 15 for a total of 26. Do we have uh, anyone uh, who would like to make uh, a comment, who would like to give a synopsis of the lesson for today? Yeah, I learned learned that we all are supposed, we need to, do what God tell us to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Mother Dupree. Okay. Are there any other remarks? Any other comments? No, thank God. And no, thank God. Thank you again. Wonderful lesson. At this time, we're going to have the uh, minutes from the uh, Sunday School. Um, Sister Minnie Johnson will share with us those minutes. Thank you, Sister Johnson. You're welcome. May 28, 2023, Anderson Chapel and St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. Call to order at 10.01 by Pastor Lewis. Song, Close to Walk with Thee by Mother Barnes. Prayer by Reverend Faison. Lesson 9, Subject, The Challenges of Change. Background passage, Acts 9, 1 through 31. Print passage, Acts 9, 9 through 17. Key verse, um, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put in his hands on him, saying, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the, in the way as thou hangest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 9 and 17. Um, the lesson was reviewed for 31 minutes. Total today is 26. Our final compliment was uh, by Mother Dupree, Francis Dupree. Thank each of you for joining in with us this morning uh, for our Sunday School. We know, as already been uh, uh, testified by those that have shared in their comments, that there has been a blessing through the lesson this morning. We received something, and even as uh, was stated, we all learn, even from those who make their comments. Uh, and we just thank God for the interactivity of the Sunday school lesson. Uh, at this point in time, again, we say thank you, uh, uh, Trustee Wooden, for such a wonderful lesson. We thank God for each of you that have taken part from those that have done the devotional leaders, Mother Barnes and uh, Reverend Faison, uh, and to uh, Sister Johnson, who did our minutes. At this time, we're going to prepare to transition into our morning service. <laughs> 